happy Wednesday. It's lacrosse goalie Wednesday. Hope you guys are having a great, uh, great week. Um, happy, uh, happy COVID free Wednesday, We should call it this COVID free zone. So, uh, Hey there, Easton, be camera. You see on Instagram there. Good to see you guys. Uh, be wit lax. Good to see you. Glenn, two, three, all my, all my goalies are checking in on Instagram to everybody else. Who's watching me on Facebook and on YouTube and all that great stuff to me a favor. Uh, leave me a, uh, a, a like, leave me a, uh, a heart, leave me a, a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. That'd be fan- fantastic. And uh, for our goalies watching, for everybody watching, I got two really good topics tonight. One, how to be a leader on the field without being an a-hole. Um, and also we're going to talk about some clearing. I'm going to do my best with some new technology tonight, just trying to do some Google Sheets. And I worked literally six and a half hours today trying to get this facebook live right for tonight so hopefully you guys enjoy it and uh and hopefully you'll share this with uh somebody who needs to uh needs to see it so um if you wouldn't mind doing that that would be great and if you're not a member of our free facebook group on on a free, free facebook group creating the lacrosse goalie of the future so if you just type that into facebook as a search we'll come up and um uh melody grinstein good to see you um uh happy to uh would love to have you in the group but here's a key if you join the group you gotta answer the three questions okay so for all my young guys who are on instagram uh you might want to pop on facebook just for that okay because we do uh we got a great group there a lot of great parents got a lot of great families a lot of great communication about lacrosse goalie position um and i've been doing this uh, a long time so i've been sending a lot of people straight which is great we got some great coaches in there too doing good stuff so happy to um uh, happy to uh, have you guys in there. So this week's video is brought to you by, <laughs> if you head on over, over to athletespecific.com, my other life is uh, working with athletes in a variety of sports who have got big athletic dreams and um, got a lot of really good stuff going over, over going on over there. So go ahead over there, grab the automatic negative thought download and um, and how to deal with negative thoughts. And uh, I've got a great new program starting soon called Mental Performance School, which you'll want to be a part of, which would be great. If you're a parent, especially if you've got a kid who's working hard and they're not really getting the results they you think they should be getting, you're going to want to check out uh, Mental Performance School. Uh, I'm really excited to uh, get that going. So um, yeah, so great stuff. So a uh, couple good things. I was hoping to have Tommy Bruno on, Mr. Wonderful. Uh, however, he got hit by a car. Totally kidding. He didn't get hit by a car. Totally stood me up last week. It looks like Tommy's got a new job. And he, and uh, but and anyway, we interviewed uh, Coach um, Coach Ken Lovick, and uh, of who's the president of the MCLA. So a lot of you guys know really like that. You go back in our archives. You can check that out. Uh, a lot of good stuff there. If, if your if your goalie has Division One lacrosse dreams, which is totally natural and totally cool and totally where we start, uh, what happens over time is goalies kind of find out that maybe Division One isn't their dream, isn't their goal. And I've helped a lot of goalies get to that Division One dream. I've also helped a lot of goalies, a lot of families realize that there's other options out there. It, it you know, if you're looking to pursue a, a specific degree, and that doesn't mesh with your Division One dream, if 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 you're looking to go to a different type of school, you know, maybe a bigger school or a little school, or maybe you want to be an engineer, or maybe you want to be a nurse or a pilot, and you realize like that your Division One dream now all of a sudden doesn't mesh up with that, you know, then you've got to make some choices. Looking at MCLA schools, uh, which are um, uh, are fantastic, they open a whole world of lacrosse to a lot of people that don't uh, that don't uh, don't really realize that it's there. Um, so that interview that I did with Ken Lovick is really really awesome. Um, so check that out. Uh, for our, welcome to our new lacrosse school university members. If you don't know what lacrosse school university is, head on to lacrosseschooluniversity.com and uh, check out the. Uh, you can get some free videos there that I put together. Um, it's basically my coaching arm. We have three three tiers and uh, of, of coaching. So to our new lacrosse school university members this week. Um, Congratulations, you're in. And I've been working really fast and furious on a lot of goalie audits uh, lately. So, so now is really the time. Even though it's you know Christmas, a lot of seasons are wrapping up and things like that. People are kind of winding down for for the winter. Now is really the time to put some really good mental work into your game to get to have the best spring possible. Now I know lots of a lot of things are up in the air right now where I live. We just got totally locked down for a month. Um, but the idea is now is is really the best time to work on your game because you're almost not distracted by having to be on the field every day, right? That's a really interesting thing to 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 consider. Okay, so um, so if that's for you, check out lacrossegoaluniversity.com and grab the free videos that I've got there, um, and that'll be uh, so new new videos going in all the time as well. Okay, so without further ado, um, ado. 
what does it do anyway? Um, Ellis Redford, I see you. Dave Nord, I see you. Good to see you guys. Mike Tupin's in. Jonathan, yeah, like Jonathan Redford's in. Liking the music. Uh, just got Alyssa's heads back from Tommy. Yeah, it's yeah. Tommy Bruno, man, Mr. Wonderful. You got to get on here, dude. Um, Jason Edwards, good to see it. And uh, Alyssa is kicking butt. That's fantastic. So I had a couple goalies this weekend at play down in Florida at a pretty big uh, recruiting event. Although I'm, I've yet to find out if it's really like a recruiting event or if it's just like, uh, uh, anyway, <clears throat> and it was good. Everybody got good helmets, by the way. But, um, but you know, one of the things I just wanted to talk before we kind of get into the questions is, and we had this question come up last week. A uh, goalie on Instagram sent me a note, said, "Hey, what's the best recruiting events to get to?" And you know, it's interesting when you're when you're in that upper tier of goalies, and you've been playing for a while, and you've been good for a long time, and and you're like a twenty twenty three or twenty twenty five, like in that range. Um, uh, you know, if you're good and you're playing on top tier teams, you, you're you're known, you're noticed, you, people know who you are. And what's interesting about that scenario is that is that what happens in in that situation. And for those of you that don't have goalies in this situation, you're really gonna want to listen up here because sometimes when you're a goalie and you're in that level, that rarefied air, it's almost hard to stand out uh, because if you're going from event to event to event. Uh, it, it, it can sometimes hold you back a little bit. And if coaches have seen you play or maybe they know of you and they, and they know who you are, or they know you, maybe your head coach and they, they know your club coach and, and uh, they know your goalie coach and all this stuff. What happens is, is that it's, it's almost like sediment in a river. You know, it's just, it just settles the bottom and there's not a lot of chance to really kind of stir things up and make things happen. And so, a lot of times for, for my families whose goalies are not necessarily in that top tier yet, or they're a long way from it, whatever. But the idea here is that is that you really have a lot of opportunities to, uh, to if you haven't been seen for a while, to work out, get strong, grow, and then all of a sudden show up and be like a head turner, right? Uh, so so I, I want people to know that wherever you are in that spectrum, whether you're like, and it doesn't matter what your age is, if your goalie is like one of the top goalies in the country, like, you know, Jason's got one of the top goalies in the country, um, you know, or if we've got, if we've got, uh, you know, a goalie who's who like, like you're just starting out and you're just trying to figure this out. And I, I did a goalie audit and work on a goalie audit right now for a goalie out of New Jersey who was late to the game of lacrosse. This kid's a freshman and he's a head turner. And nobody knows who this kid is. Like nobody knows who this kid is yet. But I, but I guarantee you, like in a year, year and a half or so, with some really good coaching and some really good um, direction, he's going to show up at one of those events and really stand out. But the side story to all this, the reason why I wanted to share this story is because your job is not to be seen, right? And people get sick of hearing me saying this, but but for those of you guys who might be new to me and new to what I do, I'll, I, like my, my saying is always this, being seen is a byproduct of being good, okay? But even then, if, if a coach comes to you and says, hey, I want you to play at my school, the odds of that school working for you are small. And I don't necessarily want you to be a hoe or a, a you know, like a, a like a goalie hoe, and going like I'll just go wherever, whenever somebody likes me, I'll go there. Like, don't be a goalie hoe, right? Like, this isn't lacrosse Tinder. We're not coaches aren't swiping right on their phone, going yep, yep, yep. No, it's like you got to reach out. So don't. Um, and that can start now. Like, no matter how gold how old your goalie is, uh, that can start like now. And th what I mean by that is like if your goalie is eleven and they have a Division One lacrosse dream. Let them start doing research, right? Let them start doing research. I've started working with a goalie this um, this fall. It's one of the top goalies in the country, and they've been playing that I'm waiting for someone to find me game. And they're almost missing out a little bit because they've been waiting. So uh, don't wait. Let your goalie start now. Like now, when's a good time to start? How about now? Like not now, now, like now, now. Um, and so don't, uh, don't delay. So, uh, please, please don't, don't, don't delay <laughs> chasing that. I literally love it. Um, good stuff. All right. So let's resonate with people. All right. As always. So glad, man, everybody's, everybody's here. This is good stuff, right? Got a lot of people jamming in for sure. Good. Got a couple pages open. Dave Nord. Howdy, buddy. Good to see you. Dave Nord, give us a little update on Arizona. What's going on in Arizona? I, I saw we had a, a neat little post today about, you know, Arizona was talking about a hoe, like Arizona's like, 
just taking anybody right now in terms of teams and, and, and tournaments and soccer and lacrosse and whatever, like they'll take anybody right now. And, uh, but I know some areas of Arizona are shutting down. And so there was like a soccer, massive soccer tournament, I believe got shut down like a week or two ago. So give us a little update there, Dave. Um, that'd be, uh, that'd be cool. So while Dave's doing that, I'll get on with our first question of the week, which is get my first banner up. I'm going to get my banner. Up. All right. Um, so this came from Camden Peacock out of Arnold, Maryland. Okay, for those of you guys that know Camden, give a big shout out. Um, but he wrote like, how do how do you be a leader on the field without being an a hole? Okay, um, and you know this is a great question because we talk about goalies needing to communicate right in the in the sport of lacrosse, and 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 one of the things that a lot of people don't really realize is the lacrosse goalie position the communication demand of a lacrosse goalie is higher than any other sport that I can think of. The only other sport I could possibly give a little bit of uh, like a correlation to would be like a baseball catcher. But then a lot of times you're going to get that, that baseball catcher is going to get the, the pitch choice from the coach. Right. And uh, they're just relaying like what the coach wants them to do. But, but people don't realize this, that the lacrosse goalie position is the, the field lacrosse goalie position is the most um, is the most difficult um, position out of out of everything. So when Camden asks here, is like, hey, okay, and I'm I'm not supposed to be communicating, but I don't want to be a jerk about it. Well, here's the thing: is that part of that problem of a goalie being a jerk comes from the coach not preparing the team for what a goalie needs to be right on that what the goalie's role is on the team the, the challenge for lacrosse goalie is that there's so much to learn right and and as i've said like it's it's the lacrosse goalie position is also the most difficult lacrosse goal, the goalie position to play because of where the ball can come from the speed the velocity the direction change high low right left up down like the net six by six, like it's huge, right? So, so it's all very complex. So a lot of, so you throw on top of that, the, the idea that now, okay, goalie has got to communicate as well. If a goalie is new and relatively young, uh, then, then throwing on the communication piece can be really complicated. So, so you've got an interesting dynamic there. You might have a goalie who's playing, who's not very good, right? Who's now also tasked with the demand to bark out orders to his team. Okay. So you can see where this can already be a bit of a problem. If the goalie is not very good and now they're barking out an order to, let's say a defenseman who's much better than he is, or maybe older, like, you know, you could have a freshman and a junior defenseman, de a defender and, and, a, and, a, and a freshman in the cage. There's a weird dynamic there. So this is why I always start with a coach first and I'll post, post this link. Uh, I did an article, I did a video on this a, a while ago. Uh, another video on this for those of you guys, might, I'll post it in the comments. Um, uh, but I, I believe that every team should have a goalie coach team communication plan. Okay. So, but I got an interesting message today and I can't, I apologize. I forgot who this is from. I didn't write down the note. of who. So this was the email. Says, hey coach, love your topics for today's show. I had one quick comment and you may be already touching on this in your set. But one thing to stress with goalies is they need to get the defense to trust them, be supportive, earn their respect first, and then the leadership will follow and you won't sound like an a-hole. But there has to be teaching with that. And then I think that last little comment is really important. There has to be teaching with that. Uh, you know, there's there's all sorts of moving parts here. There's all sorts of, you know, uh, of, of layers of hierarchy and um, there's layers of, you know, peer pressure and all that stuff that goes on in school and, and, and it's no different. So, but, but, Again, a hockey goalie doesn't go through this because like a hockey goalie will yell like, hey, pucks over there, you know, pucks right, or pucks left. You know, they're not yelling slide. They're not yelling, you know, any, making any of those calls. Um, a soccer goalie can basically go an entire game and never say a word, uh, especially at, at younger levels. So um, uh, it's important to understand. It's important to understand those dynamics. OK, but but earning respect in a team environment comes in a couple ways. Okay. Um, and let me just get back to my banner here. Um, there we go. Uh, so one is you're awesome. Like you're good. You know, you're a good, you're a good player. You're a good goalie. And so you show up on the field and, uh, 
you know, you're a stud or a stud at, and everybody's like, dang, yeah, great. Okay. They know what they're doing. I'll do, I'll do what they, what they tell me to do. Problem is that, so, you know, you come onto a field and maybe that, that defenseman that you're working with, they came from another team and they had another goalie or maybe goalie was as equal as you. And they're like, our, my goalie was better than your, than you are. So I'm, you know, they're playing that game. Uh, and, and, and that, so sometimes you even come in and you're a good goalie and you get some of that play as well, which is kind of weird. Um, uh, now with like Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and all this stuff, it's, if you've got a, if you've got a highlight tape, you know, people can go check it out real quick and go, Hey, that, that goal is pretty good. Or that goal is horrible. I don't know, whatever. But the idea here is that, is that, you know, if you're awesome and you show up, there should be a level of respect given to you. But again, there can be a weird like dynamic there that, that you can't prepare for. And you almost gotta, you gotta keep earning it. But what I liked about the comment that I got today on, uh, on Facebook was this idea of to be supportive. So one of the things I encourage all my goalies to do when they go to a, a, a new team is to find out names as quickly as you can. And one of the things nowadays is that, you know, it's like, it's like, Kids are trying real, like for all my goalies watching me on Instagram right now, like, here's the deal. A lot of you guys are worried about you're, you're so keen on not looking keen. Like, right. You're not, you, you, you're just trying so hard to, to not look like you, you basically give a shit. Like it's, it's, it's weird. And, and a lot of coaches are going like, guys, come on girl. Like this is not uh, exclusive to just the boys either. This goes both ways. So, so, but one of the things you do is when you get with a new team, especially is learn everybody's name. Okay. And these are just like social skills that you'll carry with you with, with you for the rest of your life. Learn someone's name, repeat it to them. Like, Hey, I'm Chris. You're, you're Tom. Great. Hey, nice to meet you, Tom. Right. Let's do this. Right. Um, and, and what I want you to understand is that, you know, you're not trying to like, like be overly friendly or get a date. Like the, the idea is like when you get in the game, when you say, Chris ball, you're like Chris balls over there. And like Chris goes, Oh yeah, there it is. <clears throat> okay, cool. You know, <clears throat> or Kevin, you know, sometimes goalies go like, I'll just learn their numbers. Cause you're looking at the back of everybody's jerseys. And I've heard, I hear this all the time. Like, you know, two, eight ball side, right. Two, eight ball side. Right? And two, eight doesn't even know he's two, eight for that game. You know, he's, he, you got a team together. It's a club, right. And now all of a sudden everybody's given a new penny. And last week, two, eight was like, Two six, right? You know, and he finally got his number figured out by the end of the tournament. And now you're giving him a new number. He doesn't know what the hell is going on. But when you know what their name is, you can start to yell that. And that, that to me is a sign of respect, right? Um, and that way you're not goalie, right? You're, you know, whatever, Kevin, right? Or whatever it may be, or Alyssa, or you know, or or, or Caitlin or whatever, right? Um, but but getting to know their name and being able to like, you know, hey, Chris, your point, right? Um Tommy, you're hot. Like, you know, Caitlin, you're next. You're two. Like, whatever. Way better communication, right? And that starts to earn your respect, right? And so then also you're not, you're not an a-hole because you're just yelling out weird stuff. You're actually, you sound like you know what you're doing, right? And you're not just blaring out like, you know, fire, which is one of the worst calls ever. Okay, so um, being supportive. This is a good one too, and this is something that can be done at, at any age, right? If you see a, t a player on the field, it doesn't even have to be your teammate. If you see them make a good play, say, say something nice, nice hu hustle, great ground ball, right? Nice job, look up field, like you know, uh, side side left, like you know, nice defense, like whatever, like learn to be complimentary, right? Because that also goes a long way because one thing about as goalies, like when we're letting balls in the net, we can't show frustration. Okay. We can't show that we're bummed out. We've just got to be neutral or always upbeat. Right. Uh, you know, I, I, those of you guys know, like I watch a lot of formula One racing and there's this guy named Daniel Ricardo who's from Australia and he's always upbeat. And I wish I was like that because people, you know, when he when he comes into a room, he no matter what his result is on the track, he's upbeat, and everybody around him is still upbeat. They're positive, and as a goalie, if you can be upbeat and positive, that goes a long way, and that also earns your respect, right? So then later, when you're yelling at a kid like, "Hey, uh, you know, get the ground ball," or "I'm open," they're gonna look at you like not like you're a jerk, or you're saying like "slide." They're not going like, "Oh, this kid's an idiot." They're going like, "All right, yeah, we're, he's figuring it out too. Like we're going, we're good. Like it's all good, right?" 
And sometimes you might have to turn a kid. You might have to work with a new player, uh, a new teammate, and you've got to turn them a little bit because maybe they've got a bad attitude or maybe their last goalie was just like you, except they, but they sucked, right? Um, you just got to be – and this is a very adult skill. I think you know, for a lot of you guys listening, you got long, younger goalies. Um, you're going, my kid barely says boo, right? Um, and I get it. And part of being a lacrosse goalie is learning how to get out of your shell. But that needs to be facilitated by a coach. Okay. So I'm going to come, basically, we're going to work on this in two ways. I'm going to tell you that as a goalie, these are the things you can do. But here, we're going to talk about how like the coach needs to facilitate it. And I'm going to finish up by talking about like, if the coach isn't facilitating it, what you can do to make it better. Okay. And as parents, I'm going to talk about what you guys can do to help your goalie make it better. Okay. Um, you know, coaches need to facilitate what a goalie is calling and when and why, right? That's really important. All right. So, so when a coach gets the defense together and says, like, all right, we're sliding from adjacents, we're not sliding from the crease. Okay. So, Tommy in the cage, he's going to be calling ball position. So, if you hear balls top right and you're back left, you don't need to be looking at the ball because we don't want any cutters coming through. Right. So, so if you're, you know, if the ball's top right and you're back left, you're just sloughing in the hole, but you're really primarily about primarily worried about your player, not the ball carrier, right? Cause you're not the slide, right? That type of communication now helps everybody understand like, Oh yeah. Okay. Get it. Um, I don't have to worry about everything all the time. And the defense can start to go like, all right. Yeah. Jimmy yelled balls top, right. Um, and I was top center, but I, wasn't worried about the slide. So when that guy from top right beat his man, that was me. That was my fault. That was my bad. And it's all good. It's no big deal, right? It, 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 like people talk about athlete shaming. And I, I think that's a big joke. Like I really don't like it because, you know, outside of an athlete, just understanding what they did wrong and then learning from that, that's all the shame you need to feel. It's like, hey, I screwed up. It's all good. I'm coming back, right? Because now next time as a team, Maybe the goalie didn't yell loud enough, or maybe the goalie didn't communicate it clear enough, or maybe the maybe the 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 player just got mixed up because they're new. Now, what's cool about that is in a team environment is like we can all help that guy, right? Right. So maybe you you know you're the defender on the field and you know okay yeah Jimmy yelled balls top right, I'm like side left, but I know that that new kid is he's he's the slide right so. Maybe maybe he chips in and says, hey, hey, Timmy, you're hot, right? And, oh, okay, got it. Yeah, so now Timmy's got his head on a swivel. And now Timmy does a good job, right? But that's part of a team communication plan that has to be facilitated by the coach. Or maybe this week the coach goes, hey, guys, all right, we're sliding from the crease today, right? And I know in practice all we had was uh, was Jimbo was in, was in the crease, and he did all our slides. But this team is hooping us because they're pulling Jimbo out from the inside all the time. And now – uh, Tommy, I know you've never slid from the crease before, but you're the guy. And so Jimmy in the cage, he's going to yell, you know, if you're hot. And when you hear Jimmy yell slide, you're going to go to where he called the ball. It's like, so, so Jimmy goes, ball's top right. You know, Timmy, you're hot. And then Timmy hears slide and Timmy goes, oh yeah, ball's top right. Now he just turns and goes, right? Because that's what he's supposed to do. And that's how this works, right? You know, one thing that I, that I find really funny is when teams have, uh, when teams have, the, they'll do a little huddle. You know, the goalie lets a ball in. I did a goalie audit a couple of weeks ago for a really good goalie uh, uh, out, of, out of Long Island. And this is funny. She lets the goal in. The defense get together without the goalie. And I'm thinking, like, what are they talking about? Like, what, what are they talking about? That's the, They don't know what's going on, right? The goalie's got to be part of that communicate, be, be part of that that. that hub of that wheel so that everybody knows like, Oh, I get it. You know, this is what we did wrong. And this is, you know, Oh, it's my bad. I didn't call that soon enough or whatever. You know, you've got to have, you're going to do those little team defensive things, you know, after goal goes in, everybody huddles up real quick. You got to have everybody in it, the goalie, the D and, and talk about what, what went, went, ugh, what went wrong or else. Okay. Um, you know, you're just going to bring it back to the air and correct it. Like, Hey, did the goalie call the, where the ball was or did nobody hear it? Um, you know, or was it, it wasn't loud enough or, you know, maybe they call position, but they didn't call slide. Like where was the breakdown or maybe the goalie did everything right. 
and Karen over there was not paying attention and, and it resulted in a one on the goalie and it's an easy goal, right? So uh, got to have those conversations, bring it back to the error and then correct it. Okay. Uh, ideally the coach after the game can look at those situations and go, okay, let, listen, who called what here, right? How did this go? Did it work? Right. Because when we talk about a goalie being an a-hole, a goalie is only being an a-hole if the team is not of this uh, on the same page, right? If the goalie's yelling out the ball position, yelling out slides, and then nobody's listening to the slide call, well, that's on the team. And the coach has to get on that and go, all right, like guys, listen, we gotta we gotta be listening to the goalie here. Right? We gotta figure this out. All right. Um, you know, and sometimes when you when you let a goal in, you know, and you have one of those little huddles, one of the things you say is like, All right, guys, girls, we're all just too big, fat, slow, and ugly to stop this team today, right? Like, I mean, you have those days, right? It's like, we are just horrible comparatively. So what do you do then? You do the best that you can do, right? With what you got. And you try to give up shots that are, you know, better for the goalie. So you tell the goal, you know, he's like, all right, guys, listen, just give me the outside shots today. So pack it in. Let's pack it in real close. Nothing in tight on the crease, right? And you give up those outside shots, and, and which you probably should be doing anyway. And now the team goes like, all right, at least we're doing that right, right? We're doing that right. So, but sometimes you got to have those conversations and, and go just like, I'm too ugly to make a save today. Like, this isn't good, right? And who's had the, like, everybody can relate to a goalie who's had those days, right? Um, so, so don't, don't be, um, uh, don't be too fearful or, or aware of those. And I think part of it too is, is as a goalie, if you can say, hey, I messed up, right? I should have that one. That goes a long way too, but you shouldn't be saying like, I should have every one, right? Like, cause there is a bit of like, there's a bit of like, all right, you know, all right guys, that's like the sixth one on the goalie we've had today. Uh, we got to step this up, right? Um, and so, uh, and you know, there's going to be days when you yell at your defense, right? There's going to be days when you yell at your defense and go like, all right, this is horrible. Come on, right? Cause I, I've seen that. And, and, and it's not ideal, but that's when you're being a little bit of an a-hole, but you're also trying to earn that respect. It's like, come on, we know what we should be doing better. We're not doing it. Let's go. Um, but that takes a while. And I'll finish up with this. If your goalie is meek, right? If they are, you know, I, I don't believe every athlete can be a leader. They're not wired for that, right? So sometimes taking an athlete and trying to make them be a leader, it's just not in their personality, right yet it may come but it might be be there yet so that's where this coach communication plan team communication plan has a real merit because what ends up happening is that is that a coach can address the fact that hey like all right like jimmy's in the cage and jimmy you have to make that call then like you have to yell that or or karen you have to tell us like where the ball you know whatever you know don't be you know then the team is looking at karen going hey like it's okay it's okay. Just yell, just yell, yell my name, yell where the ball is, like whatever, like just, just be more assertive. And it's like almost the team is giving the goalie permission to be more of that leader. And then you get more of that coming out of it because not every goalie is a chatterbox. Not every goalie is, you know, assertive. Not every goalie is a leader. Um, you know, I remember as an eighth grade kid playing in a summer league with a men's team in Massachusetts and, I was, I was a, um, I was a free agent and I was the, this team had won the whole thing the year before, but they didn't have a goalie that year. I don't remember what happened, but I got a chance to, uh, I, I got a chance to play and, um, uh, and that was weird for me because I'm playing with like 25, 30 year old guys and I'm an eighth grader, you know, what is that? Like fourth, you know, was that 13, 12, 13? Yeah. 12, 13 years old. And, um, and, uh, and so what ends up happening is that is that that I first got to play with these guys and I was like a little bit like oh dude, I can't yell at that guy he's got like a beard, you know. Um, and, and but then later that that defenseman turned around to me and he goes, "Listen, I gotta hear you, right? I got you got it." And it was just this it just unloaded this pressure off of me, and that really that really helped having that that bit of permission almost. But you can earn that permission. Just take it. You know, but if your goalie again is meek and quiet, they're not going to want to do that naturally. Uh, and so you got to kind of put them in a situation to succeed. Okay. So parents, this is all this. Sometimes if you realize the coach is a dud and they're not going to do this for you and you know that your kid is not the loudest kid in the field or they're new or they're trying to figure it out or it's a new team. Um, 
you know, I had a, I had a goalie last summer. Uh, this was two summers ago. Got with a new club program, one of the top club programs in the in the in the in the, in the country, and he was like shy all of a sudden because he was playing like these two stud all American defensemen and he didn't want to be like, he, 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 it, it was, it was unfortunate because we didn't, I didn't realize that was going to happen to him prior to going. I thought this was going to be like, not a problem, but when he got there, he got really, he got real shy all of a sudden and they kind of lost their first game in this like really big tournament uh, because his communication was off. Uh, so, uh, but he was able to rebound kind of in the second game. I felt bad because I didn't even think to ask at that point, like, Hey, how are you playing with new guys? But it's something I ask a lot now of our goalies. Okay. All right. So some good comments here, <laughs> Dave Nord, Karen pretended they are the manager. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Um, Ellis, if you're ultra, if you are ultra competence, Ellis, rewrite that for me. That can come across as being an eight, an eight. I can't, I, I, I don't, I can't read all the code, Ellis. <clears throat> um, oh, being ultra competitive can come across as being an a-hole, depending on how a goalie handles it. Yeah, I was ultra competitive. Um, and I, and in fact, the older I got, the more competitive I got. And what was really interesting was that when I played like adult level across, that competitiveness rubbed off on guys that weren't competitive. And... I've always been competitive. I feel like um, I feel like we. I don't know. I feel like you learn more when you decide that you're going to go win, right? If you're going just to kind of goof off and have fun, then things don't matter. As but as the goalie, you want to be. Um, you want to be. Um, you have to be the most competitive person on the field, right? Or else, because uh, if you're not, then everybody else's big effort you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna let 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 a ball by and people aren't gonna think they're gonna care and that's like the worst thing that can happen to a team so for a goalie you're natural you should naturally be the most competitive person on the field but you just have to be mindful of how you deal with other kids and their level of competitiveness that's why like this goalie audit i was doing today it's kind of fascinating to me because it was a new ki new kid like late to the game of lacrosse late to the goalie position but it was at least surrounded by two really good defensemen. And, you know, when you have that, when you at least have like one or two defenders who are like good and they're, they're also competitive, they may not be good, but they're also competitive. It really changes the focus on the defensive end of the field. So that's kind of something to consider. So Ellis, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> yes. Now you're speaking my love language. Yeah, dude. Like we just got it. Goalie's got to be the most competitive kid on the field. All right, so listen, I'm going to try this, okay? So this is this is a big test for me. I spent like six hours today working on this, guys. So, And I know a lot of you are excited for me to cover this. Um, how to run a clear most goalies can succeed in, okay? I have a really ancient uh, YouTube video that I wrote, that I did years ago uh, on an easy clear for most lacrosse goalies. So if you go to YouTube and you go for lacrossegoalietips.com and, and you look for an easy clear, for most lacrosse goalies, um, let me see if I can pull that up. Um, easy clear for most goalies. Yep, <laughs> you'll see me with like this was ten years ago. Um, I will post it in the comments. Hang on. I'll throw this in the comments real quick so you guys can uh, you guys can check it out later. But um, but I'm gonna cover. Uh, basically the same stuff like uh my this clear um for a lot of you guys young guys on instagram watching me right now like uh you're unfortunately not gonna be able to see this if you head on over to facebook and go to my page lacrossegoalietips.com you can see this live right now okay um but the concept here it, it, when i was in and this goes all the way back to when i was in like eighth grade this idea that you know I, I had kids on my team who could catch i had some kids on my team who couldn't catch i had player you know as goalies we all know this like there's a couple kids that you want to get the ball to and other kids you just dread throwing the ball to right um i did a, a goalie audit this last week for a goalie and um and their team I, what was the kid's name hunter hunter the coach was always yelling give it to hunter give it to hunter give it to hunter all, like all i could hear the whole entire goalie audit was this coach every time the goalie made a save it was like hunter's open and hunter, hunter wasn't like always open and that was really annoying to me but what i hear when i hear that is i hear a coach 
um, who is uh, doesn't understand what to do with clearing. Okay. And, and they're so paranoid about what their goalie can do with the ball. They're just trying to get rid of it. And so, and this goes for the boys and the girls. So for those of you guys listening that have girl goalies, obviously I'm, I'm going to have to do a, like a, I'm doing a boys example here on a boys field. I, I don't have, you know, seven guys, I got six guys, whatever, but the, the concepts are the same. And I'll be honest that in the women's game, the clearing is like, is really bad, like really bad. And I want to start by sharing this. So let me, um, I'll just get my screen up here. Oh, I'm nervous. This is like, I haven't done this with uh, um, slide one. Boom. Okay. So there's two concepts to understand. Okay. And again, I apologize to my Instagram folks because you're not going to be able to see this. Uh, Instagram does not have the ability for me to to share my feed like live. Um, so you're just getting my camera. But if you listen, you'll get this too. So um but there's basically two cons. There's like four dozen concepts that I want to cover today. No, just kidding. But here's the thing. We, when we have a goalie in the cage, uh, I, I've got a little bit of a pet peeve. And I, and I realized it recently when the concept of wall ball, you know, when COVID hit, everybody's like, oh, wall ball, wall ball. Everybody get outside, wall ball, wall ball. And it's like, and I'm, I'm watching kids doing wall ball. And I'm like, goalies don't need wall ball as much as they need to learn how to cradle. Okay. Now bear with me here. Cause it's going to feel like I'm getting off topic, but when it comes to clearing, this is, makes a massive difference. I could take a really crappy goalie and, and they don't have the concept of how to use a stick, but yet they'll, let's say they're super committed and they do like an hour of wall ball every day. All they're doing is reinforcing bad behavior and they never learn how to cradle. And the reason why I share that is that is that to be when a goalie is really good with their stick, clearing is easier than it is now. But, 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 but coaches put goalies in situations where they fail. Like, like it, it pisses me off. Like I do all these goalie audits and I have not had a goalie yet in 25 years or let's say since 2001, when I started working online, I have yet to have a goalie who their clears were just like phenomenal. And I'm like, this is the easiest, this should be the easiest part of the game. And I think what happens, a lot of coaches think like, hey, we're just trying to get the ball in the offensive zone. We're just trying to get the ball out of our end. And I'm like, that's the problem is that your, your expectation is too low. You should really be thinking like, we're going to score. Like when our goalie gets the ball in the crease, we're going to make the other team pay for the bad shot they took or the really good clear the really good save my goalie just made so i want to talk about that like the idea here is that is that when a goalie is good with their stick okay and they master cradling and dodging and weaving and all this stuff what i'm going to show you today is going to um basically unleash your team right and unleash your goalie on the women's side okay the the big problem I think that screws up most clears is that people think, well, just because the goalie can't score, we should get the ball into somebody else's hands. Well, yeah, you can do that. You got a whole field to do that with, right? And you got 10 seconds in the crease. Like, it, it's crazy to me. I see goalies just like dumping a ball off to a sh to another player and then we'll, we'll let them deal with it. Problem is, you're basically you're basically wasting a phenomenal opportunity, which is you have an extra player on the field in the defensive half, right? You have an extra, when the goalie has the ball, it is now seven on six, right? For the boys, right? Like it's just basically, let's keep this in mind, right? So this, that's an advantage that's called man up, right? We, we, when we get a power play, we're excited. You know, when no one gets that excited when the goalie gets the ball and they should, right? It's like, let's be smart about this, right? Okay. So, all right, back to my screen here, right? Um, okay. So the first key to success for clear, okay? The first key to success for clear is everybody's got to be in position, okay? It's like a theater act, right? You ever see a play? They don't just raise the curtain, right? They wait till everybody's in position. And they, what, is the, what does the director say? Places everybody, right? And then once everybody's in, in the right place, then the, then the play starts, right? The same thing goes with a clear. A clear cannot be successful if everybody's out of position, right? And so what happens is, 
is that what we're trying to do is, is, is clears should be systematic and they should be formulaic. Okay. So which, what that means is there should be a system in place that, that allows the team to succeed. And that's one of the things that this week I did a goalie audit. Um, Chris Kunkel, if you're watching, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. I, like I, the, I was shocked at how bad this team, this club team that they were paying money to be on was how bad they were at just putting kids in the right place when the goalie gets the ball. It was a gong show. And I'm like, and you guys saw my post on Facebook this week where I was like, where I made a comment about how, how bad coaching is. Uh, that was, that stemmed from this goalie audit that I did. And I was just appalled. Okay. So you got to have a, a team has to have a system in place. And I, I know for some of you right now listening to me, they're going like, oh, geez, yeah, totally. But our coach is like a Nimrod. He doesn't know what he's doing. I get it. Okay. So bear with me. Okay. Cause I'm going to give you, the, I'm going to give your goalie the tools to, to, to figure that out. Even if it's not systematic. Okay. The second thing is it has to be formulaic. And what I mean by that is like, if X happens, then we do Y. If Y happens, then we do Z and so on and so on and so on. Okay. Now I can't, I could do like six hours on this and inside lacrosse goal university for our members, I have a whole module on clearing fundamentals that goes very deep on this topic. Okay. So I'm going to scratch the surface today in about a half hour. Um, but for, for our lacrosse school university members, you can check out those videos inside lacrosse school university. Okay. Uh, if you're not a member of lacrosse school university, if not, why not? All right. Like really? Okay. Let's, let's go. Okay. So, uh, so places everyone. So most clears are going to start out like this. Okay. So let's say, um, you know, this is your team and on the, um, on the, on the right side of the field here for these guys watching the screen, you know, something happens and goalie gets the ball. Okay. Now these middies and these defenders can be in any combination. I can't possibly put, you know, the combinations of, of where these players might be, but to make it easy, there's three middies and there's three defensemen. Okay. Now you could have a long stick midi. You could have like four close defenders, like whatever. I can't go through all those details. You just got to think a little bit for me. Okay. All right. So, but the idea here is that this is kind of what you, what you're going to end up with. Okay. So now what ends up happening is, is we get to um, slide number three. And the first thing that needs to happen is that the team goalie gets the ball and the goalie has to yell clear. Now, the reason why I say that clearly is because your team defensively should be like Pavlov's dog, like Pavlov's dog. You ring the bell, the dog would salivate, right? Your team, when they hear clear, like if I'm a midfielder and I'm covering my man uh, and then all of a sudden I hear the goalie yell clear, I'm just gone. I'm, I'm going like we, it's the signal that we're now we're now in transition and it always shocks me when teams are not trained like that like or you know a goalie yells clear and there's like a long pole just staring at him like do you have the ball you got the ball did you pick up the ball do you, you got the ball you, oh you get the ball now i'm gonna go well that's like a second and a half where that player could have like run 10 yards and we can make something happen right so the idea here is that everything starts with the goalie yelling clear okay now, step number two here is that as players leave, as they as they get to their spaces, they have to be looking at the goalie. Okay. The reason being is because they may be open and not know it, but it's not their decision. It's the goalie's decision, right? So, so as a goalie, and we'll get to a couple scenarios here in a second, but as a goalie, if I've got a player in my face and that player happens to be the guy or girl that was guarding you, you're open and I need to get you the ball. And if you're not looking at me, you're going to get pegged in the back of the he head with this ball. Like I tell all my boys that if you've got a player open and they're not looking at you, you just peg them in the middle of the shoulder blades. Once they will always look at you. Now for the girls, I say the same thing, but be gentle. <laughs> That's just kind of what I do. I don't know. I'm just holding back a little bit, but whatever. But uh, the idea is, is, you know, when you hit a boy in the back, they usually got a shoulder pad there. The girl's not protected. But the point is, like, you're just trying to get their attention. Don't ever clear again without looking at me because you may be open and I may need to give you the ball. Okay. So I'm just going to go over this in two, in a couple phases here. So the first phase is 
Um, goal yells clear, and this is basically what's going to happen. Your attack are going to move away from the midfield line. Okay. Now, listen, let me preface this too, by the way. I know a lot of you guys, we got some smart coaches on here, right? We got a lot of smart coaches who lurk on my pages. And a lot of you guys have like whiz bang, you know, you're trying to substitute guys or you're whatever. And, you're, and your team sucks at creating offense off a of, off of save. Like the idea should be this. You're not trying to get your offense on the field. You, you, you basically, you, you can create offense from your goalie. Okay. But if all of a sudden, if you're just telling your guys to get off the field or like Derek over there is trying to get his fat ass to the bench because he's out of shape, right? And he's like, oh, get me out of here. No, it's like, no, you you might be our only guy that, that's open. You you sub when we get the ball in the offensive zone, okay? Right? So so the idea here is that there's a lot of coaches here that, oh, you've got your whiz bang clear or whatever. I'm going to give you a clear that basically you can score off of every time your goalie gets the ball, right? Regardless if it's a fast break clear or if it's a settled clear. So hang tight okay and again this is pretty much the same clear i did since like eighth grade like literally and i'm 106 years old so that was like a long time um so so your attacker gonna end up in this in like a in basically a fast break formation okay um they're gonna end up in a fast break formation and they're gonna get out of the way your defense they're gonna curl into these positions okay so the bench the bench is just uh, sorry this is gonna keep popping up here but the bench is uh on the bottom side of the screen okay so you're going to take your best defender, okay? And the one with the best stick and usually the one who's in the best shape too. They're, they're usually the same person. And they're going to clear up to basically the restraining line where the restraining line crosses over here, okay? Your other two defenders are going to, going to go out to the side of the goalie, all right? They're going to go out to the side and be slightly ahead of the goalie, okay? The reason why this is important is, as you'll see in the next slide, it's where the attack go, all right? And what that does for a goalie's brain, okay? Really important, okay? So now this next slide, okay? And this all happens in an instant. This is going to involve the middies as well, all right? It's middies. There, there go the middies. So this all happens together, but I just want to do them in two separate spots so you can see this, okay? The middies are going to curl out like this. Now, if you have a long stick midi or a defensive midi uh, that's like, you know, some teams, you know, I, you're short on players and, you, you, you know, you're going to leave people on the field. I get it. But the point is this, is that let's say you have one like runt of the litter midfielder or they're your long stick midi or whatever. They're going to clear out this other side. OK, but the idea here is that they, they're going to clear out low first and then come up. What I see happen a lot of times with this player is that they run way up here and they're it's all it's all clogged up. We need these players to go wide first and then upfield, okay? Cuz a lot of good things can happen when we go wide and then up, okay? So, a quick little thing I'll just I'll share with you is that a goalie for the boys, the boys have 4 seconds in the crease. The girls have 10. 10 is like like it's an eternity, okay? In the first 1,000th of a second, so goalie yells clear, the clock, like the ref doesn't start counting until the goalie has possession of the ball, all right? So I got to a point where I would yell clear when the ball was en route to me on a shot. It was a shot that I knew, like a step-down shot from wherever, and I knew I was going to make that save. I would yell clear as the ball was en route, right? And, and why? Because the offense is totally just staring at the cage. And we could get a midfielder like to break loose. And I had a pretty good stick. I can make a nice pass. And we we get a fast break going the other way. That's something you got to think of here. Is like if you know you're gonna make a save, yell clear. If the ball's like laying in the crease, yell clear, then pick it up, right? Um, why? Because Jimmy, who's your midi, who is like top right, uh, his midfielder is like staring at you picking up the ball jimmy takes off you make a pass you got a fast break right so 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 yell clear as soon as you know you're going to have the ball not before not once you have possession of it because it can be a critical second so in the first 1000 you want to look back at where the ball came from so a lot of times i talk a lot about energy so the energy is on like let's say the ball comes to the right side of the field everybody's focused on the right side goal is been yelling hey ball side right uh everybody knows ball side right it goes okay then you yell clear 
you may have a midfielder or a defenseman or some a long pole who got beat clean and now they're open, right? They're they're like open somewhere out here, and you can give a little dump and off you go. Okay, really important. Okay. The second 1,000, you want to look to the other side of the field. Okay, so whatever that is, like ball starts on the right, you're going to look to the right first, first 1,000, second 1,000, you're looking backside, right? Why? Because the backside, the, the, the offensive players are usually falling asleep watching you. And if your team is trained well and they hear clear and they're gone, you might have a nice pass out that side, okay, to make a, a break or something, okay? In the third 1,000, you're kind of backing out somewhere, right? Now, now as we go forward, you'll see, like, in this particular, the first clear we're going to do, the attack players go with all the other players. There'll be an opening in front of the cage. But if there's a player in your face, in that third one, th that third 1,000, you may be backing out of the backside of the crease to get away from them and buy some time. And in the, in the fourth 1,000, you're outside, um, you're outside the crease completely. For the girls, you got six more seconds to figure out what the hell you're going to do with the ball. I mean, really, it's like all stinking day. Okay. All right. And I'll get to that in a second. All right. So, so then we're going to end up in this position. Okay. So for those of you watching my screen, we're going to have basically the D are in an L away from the bench. Okay. Our midfielders, everybody's still on the field. Okay. Everybody's still on the field. Okay. And and it's important that they stay on the field because we need all of them to clear effectively. And um, and we're going to get everybody off the field that we need to get off once we get the ball in the offensive zone. Okay. But really, I want to score. Like, I want I want to score. Okay. So in the first scenario, I'm going to give you the first concept you got to understand is draw and dump. 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 Draw, then dump. You don't dump and then draw. You draw and dump. Am I clear? Everybody got this? Draw and dump. Give me a like or heart or a thumbs up or an angry face. I don't care. Draw and dump. If you don't draw a player, you don't dump to anybody. And this is the problem in the girls game that kills so many goalies is that basically what you're trying to do if you dump before you draw to somebody is that you are trying to feather in a pass to somebody who's already covered. You know, in, in the NFL the quarterbacks, they say like, it's like, it's like throwing into coverage, right? You don't do that. You just don't do that. Right. So, so why would I want a player on the field? Who's got the heaviest stick with the deepest pocket trying to make like, like, like an A plus grade pass into traffic. When, if I get them in a situation where they can draw a player and then dump to the open player, then we still have our advantage because we have an extra man when we're clearing. Okay. Really important. Okay, so draw and dump, draw and dump, draw, draw and dump, draw, draw and dump. I should make, I gotta make hoodies, draw and dump on it. What do you think? Okay, so really, really, really important. Okay, so what's gonna kill your goalie though is if you never practice them outside of the cage in line drills, God forbid, but you know, a fast break drill. Hey, Jimmy, go run the fast break. Me, coach? Yeah, you, Jimmy. Or Karen, go run the fast break. But coach, I can't score. I don't give a shit, Karen. Go, right? Like, why? Because we need our goalies to realize that this crease is not a place where they're stuck. It's actually just, uh, it's like a head start. Gives you four seconds, gives you 10, right? For the girls, right? But then we have a man advantage. Let's use it, right? Let's go, right? So, but your goalie will only feel comfortable if they're out of the cage in other situations. So I've got a young goalie right now who's part of lacrosse goal university and he's struggling a little bit out of the cage because I know for a fact that in practice, they're not utilizing him enough in a situation where he knows, Oh, this is me outside of the crease. And this is what I do. Not, Oh my God, I'm out of the crease. If I drop the ball, it's going to the net. And, and Karen's mom is going to yell that I should be in the cage. And all that. like, like you just got to, like you be comfortable out of the cage and most goalies are never given the opportunity in practice to, 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 to do it. Right. Yes. Darn it. Karen, do what you're told. Right. Joel Rose, draw and dump, right. Draw and dump. Love it. Who wrote that? Who wrote that? Yeah. David North. Love it. Um, so, um, so, so this is where your goalie sometimes here here's here's a here's like a, a gold medal like 
drill to fix this is like you leave your goalie in the cage and your goalie's making saves. And then when the goalie makes a save and you're working on clears, give the goalie a short stick, right? Like literally like have them like drop their goalie stick, pick up a short stick, put the ball on it and now play and, and do, do a controlled clear and just have them with a short stick. Like why? Like there any other player on the field, right? They're a midi. Right. Or take your goalie and switch him out with another player. Like just say like, okay, listen, you go, you go out to the left, put the D in the middle, like whatever, just mess it up because you don't want your goalie to think like, oh, I'm the goalie. I'm in the middle of the field. You don't want like Derek who's waddled his fat ass over to the alley on the left to go like, well, I always go left every time coach. Right. No, you don't want Karen going like, yeah, but I don't want to run. So I only go to the low spot. No, you want everybody to know where the hell they should be. Right. Where and where everybody else should be. So don't don't let them get into these little silos like I only clear up to the left. Right. It's just a gong show if you do that. So don't 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 do that. OK. Um, so um, what I want you to understand is that if your goalie doesn't know how to play outside of the cage, drawing a player and getting them close to him or her and then dumping to an open player is going to be really hard. But it's the number one concept that involves any clear any clear and not just the goalie everybody else okay all right so continuing on somebody's messaging me okay all right so this is where you're going to end up okay for the most part okay um are derek and karen related that's a great question i yeah i think so i think so i have this little avatar in my head because i also have like their mom and their dad in my head um and so yeah is are derek and karen related that's a good question yeah the, Different teams, though, not not some transgender thing. It's just different teams. Okay, I don't want to go there. All right, so um, so this is one of the scenarios that, and I would say I see this a lot when I'm doing goalie audits for goalies, is that, okay, the opposing team, the attack goes with the D, okay? Um, and so they end up going wide. They end up going, um, they end up going, you know, they, they end up covering the D. Oh, where did my slide go? Boom, okay. All right, so what happens? The goalie has four seconds, didn't hit anybody right away, okay? And so now, what do you do? Well, if there's nobody in front of you and you draw and dump, well, guess what? You haven't drawn anybody yet. So you're gonna walk it up the field. Now, in terms of like time stuff, and, and I'm not gonna go into that, like you you can adjust this to whatever time constraints are are, are involved here, right? But uh, But the concepts, hold true. I'm not going to add time pressure in this example today. Okay. All right. So the goalie's got the ball. The ball is this little star. All right. So now what ends up happening is we want the middies after they clear out. Okay. Um, to end up in this position. Okay. So here's the middies now. Okay. Which, uh, oh, brother, no, I'm working on two screens here. Um, all right, the middies, uh, slide seven. Okay, so, so after the after the goalie yells clear and there's and everybody sprints out like they're going to end up kind of like this, but then once it's settled, meaning the goalie hasn't gotten rid of it quickly, which which can be an advantage by the way, and this is where I think a lot of teams really mess this up is they're trying to get the ball too quickly like up and out, right? Um, is that you can create a lot of damage off a of settled clear, and I'm going to explain in a second. So we go from this, and then we end up the, those two middies in the middle are going to end up here. Okay, they're going to end up right there. Okay, in the middle of the field like this. Okay, it's really important that one is on one side of the midfield stripe and one is on the other side of the midfield stripe. And I'll explain that in a moment. What happens is, okay, so now we're settled. Now we got two guys and now your attack, I want your attack like out of the way. Right. For the girls, same thing. Get them down low. I don't want any attacks coming over. Like, I don't need that. Like, I don't, you, you just don't need that, guys. Like, seriously. Okay. So now what ends up happening is the the the, the opposing team is going to end up looking like this. All right. The attacker with a D, and you're going to get defensive midfielders like covering these two guys in the middle, and you're going to get defensive midfielder over there. It's like whatever. Okay. Again. So then what what do we do? The goalie's going to start walking up with it. Okay. Very simple. Because why? We haven't drawn anybody to the goalie. We, or we haven't drawn anybody to the ball carrier. I should say that. We shouldn't even talk about the goalie as the, as the goalie. It's just the ball carrier. It's the guy with the ball. Right? So everybody's going to walk up. Okay. So no attackman in this case has jumped the goalie. So everybody's going to walk up. 
Okay. So from here, we have some options. Okay. We actually have lots of options. Now, this goalie audit I did the other day, the defense were told to stay way behind the goalie, way behind the goalie. Well, what happens? The attack can come and jump a goalie, and now the goalie passes the ball to the D. We've made no advantage. We want to be drawing and we want to be dumping to an open player who is further up the field than we are. That way, we're always making progress and we're creating this like this two on one. So, what I tell my goalies is we're going to draw and dump. So, we're looking for the two on one or we're going to create it. Okay. So, the, my first favorite option is is I want to go for a score and I want to take advantage of stupid attackmen. Okay. Right. We all know how stupid attackmen are. Like, really. Okay. So, my first look in this case, the attack are, are wide and low with our defenders. Our, D, our, our two low defenders are even with the goalie. Okay. They're even with the goalie. This attackman is usually not very bright. Right. This is not always the attack. This is not the Ivy League attackman. This is not like the Johns Hopkins attackman type player. This guy is like, you know, Chris, who's kind of cool. He's uh, he's usually short and quick, and so he can he can chase that defender first, like up to midfield stripe. But from here, his mind goes completely blank, and he starts thinking about Fortnite, which went out of which really went out of popularity like last year, like burned like like crazy, gone. So Chris here is a little bit of a dud. So we can take advantage of that. So our long pole, all right. Chris doesn't realize that he can go on he can go off sides because they've never talked about how do we do an offside clear uh, like offside ride right so what we're gonna do is our midi over here the reason i got this little stop sign on him is this is the midi responsible for being on sides your midi who's on sides is the one the furthest away from the ball okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna send trevor over here d1 over the midfield stripe into the space where he is going to be completely uncovered. Why? Because the attack has drawn the D all the way down here. Okay. So our goalie makes this nice little pass to who do I call this guy? Trevor. And Trevor, what is what happens to Trevor? Trevor's basically in on a fast break. And we can score off of this. Right. We and, and no joke, we can score off this. Years ago, I went to Denver with a bunch of Canadian kids. And I coached the at-large team. It was just this mishmash of guys from Colorado and Alberta, where I came down from Canada. And, um, and Coach Brown set me up uh, and I coached the team. And I, and I went to one of our long poles. I said, listen, do you like to score? And he goes, hell yeah. My coach never lets me go over midfield. I'm like, we're going to – I had this defender. He was a gazelle. Like he was like 6'3", with legs that were like five feet of it. And we set up in this clear all the time. And he scored t three times on the weekend, right? against some amazing teams out of Denver, right? And there's some good teams down there. Cherry Creek, great. Um, so boom, this is my first favorite option. And what I do with the attackman down here is there are some angles at play here. So even if my goalie isn't a great clearer, but they can huck the ball, if they miss this defenders for some reason, I let this attackman curl out to start uh, just to be ready for any missed pass. So that attackman, if the defenseman misses it, we still get it because again, Chris's friend or Chris's brother, uh, Christian, um, who also plays Fortnite, which is very out of style, uh, never realizes he should go chase our A2 in the corner there. And so we get the ball no matter what, right? So first option, we get a fast break or we get the ball in the offensive zone, no problem. Okay, makes sense, right? If that makes sense, just give me a high five or a like or a thumbs up or whatever. Um, if you're Chris's dad and you're angry, you can leave me an angry. But, uh, but that's that. Okay, so that's option one, okay? So option two. And option two, again, this is option two when the um, attack have not jumped the goalie. So the attack have stayed with the D down low, okay? So this is option number two. This is where you want your goalie to know how to, one, cradle the ball, right? So enough of wall ball and just spend, like, work on cradling. Like, work on your hands and a stick and faking and all this stuff. Like, it's crazy, right? Uh, one thing that makes goalies stand out is that when they're really good with their stick, okay? There's a goalie right now. He's a 2023 who's getting all sorts of love. And I'm like, he's not a very good goalie, but he's got a good stick. And that's what all the coaches kind of, they're like, wow, he's great with a fake. Your goalie shouldn't be faking all that often, right? Um, so option two here, 
where no attack jumps the goalie is that now the goalie's just looking up in the center of the field. Okay. And so what you heard me say, like we're drawing and dumping and we're trying to find the two on one. This is actually a three on two. There's a DM one DM two are two minis. The goalie's going to go. Okay. So now what we do is the person who's responsible for being on sides is still this M three over here. Okay. I still want him on sides. That way, if the goalie wants to go over the midfield stripe, they can. Okay. And that happens occasionally. All right. What happens in that case, if the goalie, but what usually ends up happening is the goalie goes, draws DM one, who's uh, Chris's cousin. And uh, Chris's cousin realizes that he should, instead of staying with his man, he jumps the goalie. And now the goalie draws Chris's cousin and then passes to M one. And we've got a fast break. All right. So we got that there or, um, or the goalie comes up and Chris, Chris's cousin stays with his man. Um, but Chris's brother uh, actually jumps and we get, now we got a two on one over here. So it's basically goalie's choice. And it's kind of fun too, because you can, you can set this up in a way where um, the uh, uh, you can really mess up this, this, this midfield pairing, this defensive pairing. And if your goalie is really good and they adopt kind of like that quarterback attitude, they can look, they can look uh, one of these guys off. And, and one, you know, you get a good pair here of a midfielder and a goalie and man, you can make, you can make stuff happen in a big, big way, right? Like a big, big way. And again, fast break off, off a settled clear fast break, right? Um, uh, so that's, that's option two. Okay. Option two. Okay. Option three is the goalie ends up going to the left, right? Towards this m3 and there's a couple options here so if you've got a goalie that's really mobile and knows what they're doing what ends up happening is that the way the goalie comes up they can come up the middle of this field and then pick a side if they want right um so in this case uh m1 and m2 are kind of out of the way we're we're gonna um we're gonna take the goalie and kind of sprint in this direction now, if if DM3 here jumps the goalie, then M3 is open on a fast break. M1 over here stays on sides. It's really really easy. It's the basically the midi that's the furthest away from the ball is responsible for staying on sides. I'm not going to cover today what happens if if M3 and M2, like if we get two guys over and, and the goalie, we got we got to keep two guys back. That gets a little bit more complicated, but it's doable, right? But I'm not going to cover it here. So basically, what happens here is the goalie sprints up field. M3 goes with him. Okay, the worst thing I know a coach, I, I know a team is poorly coached when the goalie is running at a midfielder or a long pole, and that midfielder or long pole stays back on sides, and the goalie basically passes him. That is dumb. Like that is bad coaching, like flat out bad coaching, right? So the person responsible is the, is the one, the furthest away. Okay. Is the furthest away. All right. So which one, the furthest away, draw and dump furthest away. Okay. So but what happens? The goalie runs up here. If DM three jumps the goalie, the goalie then dumps to M three and M three's in on a fast break. If DM3 stays with M3, the goalie just kind of hooks a little right turn and then he goes or she goes. Okay. And then she goes in. Now, what usually ends up happening in the offensive zone is that now you've got DM2 coming back, you got DM1 coming back and that stuff. But you basically, what ends up happening, the goalie comes in, M3 is leading. Okay. So M3 is going to lead and drag their player right to the crease. If nothing works out here, then the goalie just dumps it out to A3 on the wing. Okay. Um, so that's really, it's just, it's really easy. And you can have a kid who's loaded down in equipment, who's slow, who's fat and ugly, whatever, like, and they can just get in the offensive zone. Just what you want to have happen is you don't want your goalie staying in the middle of the field. You want them running down the alley, just like any other player would and make a transition with the ball back here somewhere. Okay. What ends up happening though is as the goalie gets close to the midfield stripe, everybody's sphincter puckers up, right? Everybody's butt gets tight. And and the further the goalie runs, the tighter everybody's butt gets. And then what happens? Everybody gets nervous. Everybody, 
Karen's mom on the sideline from the opposing team's like sister. She's nervous, right? Everybody's yelling, get back in the cage, right? No, you don't yell any of that stuff, right? You say, you're the player with the ball. Go, right? Go, 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 go. Draw and dump. If you don't draw anybody for the boys, if you, you, you're you drawing the opposing team's goalie, basically, right? Score, put it in the net. For the girls, it's a little, it's a little weird. All right, what's this one? Nothing is sexier than a goalie that scares the opposing team so much that they don't know what to do with them. Exactly. Exactly. Who was that? Who was that? Who wrote that? Al, is that Alex? Um, but isn't that a dangerous pass by the box, especially... Okay, Alex mocks us. Uh, isn't this a dangerous pass by the box, especially with a good coach running the opponent box? No. No. Because... Because basically what ends up happening is you you know you've already accounted for those players, right? So that's a great question. Oops, why that why that go back? Sorry. Um right, so you already know what's happening there. Um oh my wheel is doing that, sorry. Um you already know what's 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 happening there. So like if if DM3 is off the field, right? Your goalie, yes, your goalie has to be aware that there's a sub happening, but but a lot of times you may sub your own player, right? And you're going to you're going to just sub your player back on sides, right? So that's good. So so no, Alex, it's not it, you don't have to worry about it at all. Mike Parash, right? Nothing is sexier than a goalie that scares the opposing team so much they know, don't know what to do with them. Um Queener, yes. Queener's one of a kind. I would say Queener's not one of a kind. Queener like we we've seen more goalies now. And Adam, that's a great comment. So Adam Heller wrote that. Like um, I'm not picking on you, Adam. But um but uh um it's really important. Just, just know that every goalie has at least some of this in them, right? Um, and and I can't see it when we waste a goalie in the cage. Uh, Joel Rose, do you think the pucker is because the goalies oftentimes aren't the best ball handlers, or because they are so far far from their own goal, so far from their own goal? I've seen really good goalies, okay, uh, who leave the crease and they have all the potential to leave the crease, and you get people around them who don't understand what I'm teaching you right now, and they freak out. And there's no need. There's no need, right? Nobody yells to the long pole, get back on the D. Like they just don't. It's like, get, get back in the cage. And by the way, here, you don't want anybody jumping in the cage here, right? Because you waste your advantage. Okay. You just go, right? You just go. Because really, what you can do here is you can interchange any player. I could put a D where the goalie is. I could put a goalie where the midfielder is. I could put the, um, you know, M1 where M3 is. It doesn't matter. If everybody understands what's going on, um, they, this, this thing is works. Um, Paul Smith. Yes. Goalies that can shoot and score very dangerous should practice shooting with your goalies. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, exactly why uh, goalies should play in the field, but not as a goalie. Yep. Um, uh, <laughs> it's pretty easy when you're 45 years old and everybody else is freaked out, tired. We won't go over that. But good point. It's true. All right. So, um, oh, come on. Why is this? Um... Okay. So next, next slide. So I'm going to go way longer than I plan on going. Sorry, guys. But I um, hope if you're liking this, give me a thumbs up. Um, so the second scenario is the first scenario is when the attack go out and they don't jump the goalie. The second scenario is when they jump the goalie late. Okay. So goalies have their four seconds. They've stepped out of the crease. They've walked it up the field. And now, now at some point as they progress up the field, the attack one of the attack from the right or the left jumps the goalie. So the first option I'm doing here, I think, is the goalie is the attack on the right. Exactly. So this is where it's critical. You want the D, okay? You need your D to be even or slightly above the goalie, okay? But what's happened here is every, as the goalies come up, everybody in the defensive half has moved up, right? Now, defensively, as coaches, if you're riding, what I do is I do a soft ride. I let I let the team come to us. So that's the kind of the, that's the um, antidote to, to my clears. Um, uh, be before being a goalie, I was an attack and a midi. It just works. Yes. Who is that? Mike Parash. Good. Um, yeah. Great point. Great point. Okay. All right. Um, so now, why is that? that that's, I don't like that. Okay. The attack. So the, when the attack jumps from the right. Okay. Now, we're drawing a dump, right? Draw and dump. And then where's the two on one? But in this case, it's where's the three on two. Okay. So in, in this case, 
as the goalie's coming right up the center of the field, the three on two, there's a three on two in the center. There's another three on two over here. Okay. On the right side. Since we're, so since, since the attack is jumping for the right, we're going to talk about this one first. So the, so these two attackmen should be working in tandem, but they don't always do it. All right. So this is where as a goalie, what I teach your goalie is to say, right, listen, you're looking to see where this, where this, uh, the slides coming from, right. Where, which attackman's going to jump you. Right. Um, and then, but what happens here is that your goalie needs to be looking at this attackman. Okay. Needs to be looking at this attackman. Why? Because that's going to dictate where they make the pass. If this attackman, if Chris, again, Chris, who plays Fortnite, we all remember Chris, Chris is up there, like, you know, thinking about the last battle Royale and the a comes across and then D2 is wide open. Well, then the goalie is going to draw a, and then dump to D2. Okay on the right side down low. Now what happens here is D2 needs to draw and dump. This is where people like, pardon me, but most coaches F this up in a big, 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 big way. Like big, really big, like dumb, big, like stupid, big, right? Like Kardashian big. Like, so D2 has to catch this ball and go all too often. I see D2 like it's like Karen's brother, right? And Karen's brother catches the ball and he's like, now what do I do? It's like, no, you dumbass, like go, like get a field. And then you draw, you draw Chris, right? Remember, we all know Chris, you know, Karen's brother draws Chris. And then, and then now we jump to, we, we dump to D1 and now D1, it may actually have a fast break because we're why, because our midi that's the furthest away from the ball stays on sides. We're good. We're good. There's no thinking here. Everybody just, the ball carrier has priority right? The ball carrier has priority all the time, right? And you just draw and dump and you draw and dump. Now, if, if, if the jump here uh, comes and, and this Chris, for some reason, isn't thinking about Fortnite and he, he slides down real quick, he thinks all smart. Well, now the goalie just passes up to D1 and now we're in the same position again. Right, we're now we're we're still in a possible fast break potential. One thing I didn't add here is like when when the attack when these middies in the middle see this attack come, they should be kind of backing out of this scenario a little bit, giving more space to that side. Okay, but again, I don't want to confuse anybody. This is really easy. This is really really easy. Okay, all right. So now if uh, late jump from the other side, right? Now this gets a, this is where it gets a little. This is like the most complicated thing at all. This okay, all right? So if the if the the attackman from the box side jumps, right? Same thing. The goalie wants to be looking at DM3 over here. But again, DM3 is also related to Chris, the Fortnite player, right? And we know that he's not very smart either. Okay. So what happens in this case is that the attack jumps, this MIDI rarely comes down. Like rarely comes down. And I should preface this, guys. Like, I know a lot of you guys have younger goalies, but I got a lot of people on here with older goalies. It's the same stuff, right? It's the same stuff. And 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 I like I've got high school goalies who are like division one prospects dealing with the same issues. Like it drives me crazy. Okay. So the idea here is the goalie draws the attack from the left. He's looking, he's keeping his eye here. If this MIDI does not come down, then it's a quick pass to D3. D3 is now sprinting up, okay? Now, here's where it gets a little tricky, okay? Here's where it gets tricky. The MIDI goes over. If, as D3 goes up the field, DM3 decides to finally jump, well, it's an easy dump to M3, and they're gone. If this DM, did I do this slide? I don't think I did this slide. Nope, I didn't do that slide. If DM3 stays with M3, ball carrier has priority. So D3 is going to go over. This MIDI over here stays back. And we're on sides. We're still on sides. And we still actually have a break. We still have a break down this left wing. Okay. And we're good. We're so good. This is so easy. Okay. For the goalie. The system here is, okay, goalie gets the ball. Scenario one, there's no attackman jumps the goalie early, right? So we get to walk it up, right? And we run through our options there. 
Scenario number two, attackman jumps late, right? Right side or left side, what do we do, right? Again, it's easy, formulaic, systematic, simple, all right? Now, the next one, if an attackman jumps the goalie early, like right off a save, okay? So right off a save, scenario three. Goalies, some, the attackman is in the goalie's face right away. What do we do? Okay, what do we do? This is where when you grill it in your team that nobody clears away from the goalie without watching the goalie, okay? This is why you do that is because every one of those players that leaves the goalie and they're looking back at him or her, they know that, hey, I'm not covered. I'm open. I'm open. I should be open. Like, hey, And then they're yelling, like, goalie. I'm Jimmy. I'm right here. Right. And then, and then, and they're getting into a space where there's an easy pass and then they're off the races because why we still have them basically a man advantage. We're still like, we, why? Because that attackman jumped the goalie, the attack. So that right off the bat, the goalie has drawn an attackman. We're looking for the dump. Where's the dump. The problem is most teams leave the goalie out to dry because they don't put themselves in a position where they are easily dumpable. Right. So that's, that's the problem, right? Is they're breaking out and they're, they're breaking out and there's like two of your team is breaking out the same spot. It's like, no, right now you, your goalies burned through 1001, 1002, 1003. And now they're freaking out because they don't have somebody to pass to. And now it's like cat and mouse game around the crease. Right. So, so someone has to identify themselves as being open in this case, it's D two, right? So D two on the right side. And because everybody else is cleared out, it's an easy dump. To the wing right it's an easy dump to the wing there right and so that's like i don't think i did any more examples of this one all right no i didn't you know but but it could be anybody if it's a let's say for some reason it's a midi you know a defensive midi is in front of the crease like and they're the play is taking them so now that they are in um they are in the situation where uh they are um uh, you have a midi who's wide open Problem is your midi didn't watch your goalie and they just sprinted to the midfield stripe or worse. They sprinted for a sub, right? Now your goalie is completely hung out to dry, right? When in fact, we should have like offense out of this play. Actually, I do have a second. Um, do it. Wait, where is it? Do, do it. Wait, hang tight. Um, yes. Attack jumps goalie late option two. Or did I not do it? Hang tight, guys. No, I didn't. I didn't do it. Okay. So that was the last one. Um, oh, the, the other thing here, just the line. Oh, right. I didn't highlight my lines. As everybody's looking back to the goalie, they should be also noticing, is there somebody in the goalie's face? Because maybe I shouldn't be running like 50 yards downfield. I should be closer to the goalie. And that's usually what ends up happening here is we get that first scenario where people like break out, right? And the defense do that L away from the bench. And then we get two middies in the middle of the field. We got one midi low to the, the other side towards the bench side, right? And then they realize, they look back and realize, oh, oh, J Jimmy's getting jumped. And they like, am I covered? Because if they're covered, they raise their stick. And they're like, I'm open, right? And if, and if not, and it's, people are like, maybe, maybe two guys are kind of covered by one guy right? Then they got to spread out. Then they decide like, oh, that D went with Jimmy's or Chris. So now I'm open, whatever. Right. I know for those of you guys listening to my Instagram, it's kind of hard to, 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 to visualize this, but, um, but the idea here, guys, this is very simple and teams are screwing this up in a big, 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 big way, like a big, big, big way. Um, uh, a good so Mike pressures a good approach would also have the attack coach pressuring the attack to be moving. A burst attack guy is key. What are you talking? Are you talking about for the on the goalie's team or riding the goalie, Mike? Um, because one thing I, I can't, I'm not going to get into today because I'm already going really long is what your attack do in the offensive zone. But the way the reason why I set up my attack this way is because it if we have missed passes by the goalie, we're still keeping them in bounds. And a lot of times we get offense out of those too, out of those missed passes, right? Um, there's even, you know, if you're sometimes on a clear, you just got to huck it, right? If your team's like down and you're just trying to make something happen. Uh, but I, I'm not going to get into that today, guys. So, um, so, 
so listen, um, I want you to understand that clearing is easy. It is. It's simple. It's easy. It requires you to, one, put a system in place, this system. I just gave it to you. Don't gimmick it up with like substitutions from the box and all this stuff, whatever. Who gives a shit? Pardon me, but who gives a shit? Like you need the ball in the offensive zone before you're trying to get on your offense. Like, come on. Like, let's be real. The The idea here, though, is it's got to be systematic. And then within that system, it's just got to be formulaic. Like, okay, if scenario one happens, this is what we do, right? If, if this happens, this is what we do. It's basically three things, right? No one's in the goalie's face. Attack gets in the goalie's face late or someone's in the goalie's face early. That's it. That's it. Um, even in man down situations, it's it's basically the same stuff, right? Um, but there's some stuff that I'm not going to cover today, but that's all inside Lacrosse School University. Okay, for our, me- for our members, you go inside Lacrosse School University, go to the Clearing Fundamentals section, um, and I have videos on all of that, okay? If you need any questions, just, just let me know in the forum, okay? Um, but please, the one of the most pathetic things I think out there is seeing decent goalies getting hamstrung by poor coaching, especially on clears. Right, because what happens? Goalie makes a great save, and then the the clear gets messed up. Right, not really for the goalie's fault. Uh, and then what happens? It's instead of having a shot on your end, now a shot on their end. You're getting two shots on your end, right? And hopefully you get a chance to get the ball and 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 do it again. But but a, a team can quickly go in the hole very quickly because clearing is bad, and there's no reason why clearing should be bad. Like in my opinion, there's just no excuse for it. Okay. All right, guys, listen, if you like that, if you stayed with me this long, all right, give me a like, give me a heart. If you're watching the replay, give me a like, give me a heart, um, any of that stuff. All right. I want to invite you all over to athletespecific.com. All right. That's my other venture. Please. If you've got, even if they're not a lacrosse player, you got someone in your life that, you know, and they've got an athlete with big, big, big dreams, uh, big athletic dreams, especially in this COVID age, head on over to athletespecific.com, get on the list. Um, and, um, and, uh, got a lot of good stuff happening over there. Right. Um, and for those of you out there who've got goalies, you know, um, I want to work with your goalie. I do. Let's make 2021 the best year ever. All right. Thanks for thanks for the likes. This is awesome, guys. Love, really appreciate it. Um, hey, if you're not paying me and give me likes, that's what I that's what I tell people. Right. <laughs> so um, but thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. If you got any questions, email me, coach Edwards at lacrosse or you can message me here on Facebook. Cheers, guys. Have a great night. Bye.